The 50-30-20 rule. This is what most financial experts recommend you use as a basic guideline to build a balanced budget. Essentially, the rule states that 50% of your after-tax income should be used on your needs. This includes everything like housing, transportation, food, and all of your other essentials. Then 30% of your income should be allocated to your wants. This includes anything that is discretionary, so things like eating out, shopping, traveling, hobbies, subscriptions, all the fun stuff. And finally, the last 20% of your income should be set aside for savings and investments. I think the 50-30-20 rule is insane, not in a good way. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why and show you what I think is a much better way to budget. I want to be rich! <laughs> so what is the problem with the ever popular 50-30-20 rule? Well, for starters, I think it's way too generic. It makes a lot of assumptions that unfortunately are not necessarily practical for a lot of people. And with things becoming more and more expensive every day, it's becoming next to impossible for a lot of working class people to keep their needs at 50% or less of their take home pay, even if that sounds great in theory. In 2022, the average income where I live here in Ontario, Canada was just over $52,000 a year. After taxes and deductions, that would leave most people with a take home pay of about $39,000 a year or just over $3,200 a month. So following the 50-30-20 rule, that would leave someone with about $1,625 a month for all of their needs. The problem is that the price of an average one bedroom basement apartment right now around here is around $1,700 a month. Not even a nice place, just a basement. If we're talking like a new high rise building, we'd be talking $2,500 to even $3,000 a month for a one bedroom. And that's not accounting for your insurance, your transportation, your food, your medical care, or anything, that's just rent. So just by renting an apartment, you've already blown that budget. And now what? The fact is that by today's standards, unless you're living in a very low cost of living area or you're a high income earner, the 50, 30, 20 budget just doesn't check out. It just doesn't work no matter how much you might want it to. The math just doesn't math. Now let's say you live with a partner and we could theoretically double that income. That gives you a budget of about $3,200 a month to cover your rent, plus food for two people, transportation for two people, medical care for two people, clothing and toiletries for two people. I suppose in this case, it's doable. Again, if you're living in like a crappy basement apartment, it's certainly not an easy thing to do. It's not gonna lead you to a high quality of life and it's still gonna be a very, very tight budget that you're on. Unless you live in a very low cost of living area or you're a high income earner or you're living with multiple other people, unfortunately, it's just becoming increasingly impractical and impossible to keep your needs at 50% or less of your income. But this is just scratching the surface. This is just one of many issues I have with this budgeting philosophy and we're gonna dig much deeper into it in just a moment. But before we do, I wanna take a quick second to tell you about one of my absolute favorite ways to reduce your fixed expenses and that's by switching your phone plan to today's video partner, Mint Mobile. With the cost of virtually everything getting higher and higher by the day lately, the absolute last thing you wanna be doing is paying more for things than you need to. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably already heard of Mint Mobile, but if for some reason you're still overpaying for your phone plan, let me tell you why now is the time to switch. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service from just $15 a month. Because they run on the nation's largest 5G network, you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data. The service is every bit as good as the big guys, but cheaper. So what's the catch? There really isn't one. They just save money by selling directly to you online instead of having retail stores and passing that savings back to you. Switching to Mint is super simple and can be done fully online within about 15 minutes. Right now, the unlimited plan, which is usually $30 a month, is on sale for only $15 a month. We're talking unlimited talk, text, and data for just $15 a month, and it only takes 15 minutes to switch. What are you waiting for? To get started, head over to trymintmobile.com slash according to Nicole, or click the link in the description box down below. Doing so saves you a bunch of money and helps us support this channel. So thank you very much to Mint Mobile for partnering with me on today's video. All right, so let's talk about what I think is the absolute worst part of the 50, 30, 20 budget. This is probably gonna be an unpopular opinion, but to me, the idea of spending 30% of your income on frivolous things, on wants, things that you don't actually need, is insanity. That means that if you make $50,000 a year, and let's say we take 25% off the top for taxes, you'd be blowing through $11,000 a year, nearly $1,000 a month on bullshit. What do you mean? I, I have $100. Not anymore, you don't, poof. That is a ton of money. Like I couldn't imagine spending nearly a thousand dollars a month on crap. Just to put this into perspective for a moment, $11,000 a year saved and invested from the age of 20 to 30 at an average 7% annual return, which is what you basically get in the stock market, comes out to $153,000. That's a goddamn down payment on a house, but you're giving your money to Jeff Bezos and Ronald McDonald. And of course, I'm not saying you should only be buying things you absolutely need. I'm not saying you can't have any fun in life, but 30% just seems like a ton of money to be spending on things that you don't really need to be spending them on. If you earned hundred grand a year, and again, we accounted for taxes and all the rest of that, you'd be blowing through $20,000 a year on your wants. $20,000. You know what I could do with $20,000? 
It sounds like a lot on its own, because it is, but to me the craziest part is when you consider the fact that you'd be saving and investing significantly less than that, and that's the money that's actually gonna help you in your future. Theoretically, you could save the vast majority of that 30% and be saving approximately 50% of your total income, which would be great. Saving 20% of your income is really good, and if that's all you can afford and all you can manage, then amazing, and honestly, you're probably already doing better than the vast majority of people who manage to save nothing. But choosing to only save 20% when you're spending a lot more than that on things you don't even really need just seems super wasteful to me no matter how you slice it. If you're low income or you're living paycheck to paycheck, you straight up cannot afford to be spending 30% of your income on things you don't need. And if you're earning more money, if you're a high earner, I guess theoretically you can afford it, but that number quickly becomes a huge amount of money that in my opinion could be put to better use. That's all I'm saying. Here's some food for thought. If you followed the 50-30-20 rule and you were able to invest 20% of your savings every year, you'd be able to retire in about 40 years, which is, to be fair, what most people aim to do. But if you simply switched those two categories and chose to save 30% while spending only 20% on your wants, you'd automatically be able to shave 10 years off of your retirement date and retire in 30 years instead of 40. And if you wanted to take it a step further and spend just 10% on wants and save 40% of your income, you could retire in 23 years. That's the difference between having to work until you're 60 years old or being able to retire at 43 and live your life. Oh, I can't take his money. I can't print my own money. I have to work for money. Why don't I just lie down and die? And again, I am not suggesting in any way that you should be living off of ramen just so you can retire earlier. I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't spend money on things that you want just because you want them. Having wants is what makes us human, and it's what makes life worth living. If there's something that you legitimately, genuinely want, if there's something you think is going to add value to your life and make you happy, if you can afford it, then go for it. But 30% of your income is a very large chunk of money, no matter how much money you make. And I can't help but wonder how many of us are wasting that money on things that we don't actually want, things that don't actually add value to your life, things we don't even really put any thought into. Things like coffee and fast food and fast fashion and just gimmicky crap that we're not really even that emotionally attached to. And for all of that, we're selling out our own futures. If you're in a position right now where money is tight and you're finding it very difficult or impossible to keep your needs at 50% or less of your income, Part of that 30% would be much better spent allocated towards your needs. Bump your needs up to 60 or 65% and have a better quality of life, live in a better place, have a more reliable car, eat healthier food, do the things that are actually gonna make your day-to-day -day life better. And if you're fortunate enough to actually be able to keep your needs at under 50%, ask yourself what that 30% want category could really mean for you. Ask yourself if you're really happy spending it on small insignificant purchases and junk or if it would be better spent put towards something that's actually gonna benefit you in the long run. Something like being able to retire earlier or being able to pay off your debt or being able to save up for a down payment on a home or really anything else that's actually important to you. More so than, you know, going out to eat. Just saying. So the question that this all leads to is, okay, well, how should we be budgeting? And unfortunately, the answer is not that cut and dry because there's no one size fits all budget, no matter how many financial experts wanna sell you on the idea that there is. I'm confused, know, why I did you broke. call us for help if you don't do what we teach? That's why it's called personal finance, because it's deeply personal and it varies from person to person. I think one of the most important steps in building a budget that is often overlooked is asking yourself what kind of life you wanna live. Like where do you wanna live and with who and where do you wanna work and for how long and generally what do you want your life to look like? And only once you can answer those questions can you really build a budget that will help you achieve that. Do you wanna get married and have kids and live in a big suburban home or do you wanna live a dink lifestyle in a downtown loft? Do you wanna have a car or do you wanna walk everywhere that you go? Do you like to travel or are you a homebody? What are your hobbies and how much do they cost? Once you know what kind of life you wanna live, then you can reverse engineer your finances to fit that. Somebody who wants to buy a big home has to save a lot more money than somebody who wants to stay renting. Somebody who wants to retire young and travel the world is gonna need a very different budget than somebody who's happy working until they're 60 or 65 and has no issues with it. I have a friend who rents a place with a bunch of other people and he has no intention of changing that. He drives an old beater car, he has no dependents and his cost of living is very low as a result. He works mostly in the service industry, so he'll go to a restaurant or a bar and he'll get a job and he'll stay there for a while and save up a bunch of money. And then when he gets sick of being there, he just quits and he chills at home for a few months and he lives off of his savings and he does whatever he wants with his time. And when his savings starts to deplete, he starts the process over again, goes and finds another job somewhere else, works for a little while until he doesn't want to be there anymore and has some savings and then quits and rinses and repeats. And he's really happy with that lifestyle. To me, it sounds awful, to be honest with you. It sounds unfulfilling to have to live with a bunch of roommates. It sounds really anxiety provoking to not have a clear cut path for your future, but he doesn't see it that way at all. He sees it as freedom and he loves it. And so even though it's not at all how I would wanna live my life, I totally understand where he's coming from and he's happy doing that. But as a result, we have two very different lifestyles and therefore we would have to have two very different budgets. 
The point that I'm trying to make is once you know what you want for yourself and what really matters to you, only then can you build a proper budget that's gonna help you get there. And it's totally normal for your budget to change over time. Your income will change, your expenses will change, even your goals will change, and that's all good. Sticking to a budget that doesn't actually serve your lifestyle and isn't actually gonna help you achieve your goals is a form of self-sabotage. But so is making yourself miserable and struggling to keep your needs at under 50% of your income while blowing 30% of it on bullshit. As always though, of course, this is just my two cents. This is just my particular worldview. This is the world according to Nicole. I'm not a financial advisor. This is just kind of how I frame my finances and how I look at life from my own perspective. And I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Do you follow a 50, 30, 20 budget? Or if not, how have you set up your budget to help accommodate your life? Drop me a comment down below and let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. Please also subscribe if you haven't done so yet. You can follow me on Instagram. All that good stuff, all the links to everything will be in the description box down below. Other than that, thank you guys so much as always for watching. Take care and I'll see you next week.